So welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Rachel Ramist. I am a tenured professor turned television director. So my handle is at Doc Ramist. I am a huge proponent and user of scriptation, which is how I came to hang out with you all today in this masterclass. Uh, it is because I am a fan of the product. I love the product. I use the product. And honestly, I could not direct television without it. So a little bit of my credits, I'm a couple years into television directing. I got my first opportunity through Queen Sugar, through Ava DuVernay on OWN. And most recently, as in night before last, I wrapped on Sex Life on Netflix, which is not Sex Lives of College Girls. I did do that. People love that show on HBO Max. I did that last year, but this is Sex Life on Netflix. It is not for your children. So with the exception of Queen Sugar, uh, Greenleaf is when I started using scriptation and Roswell was the show that I learned, I really, really just need to go all digital. My, I use these like spring back, I always had a cool sticker. This is Two Fly New York City in the house. I always have a spring back script before I found scriptation. And I would have all these different colored pages that while you're shooting, they would bring you more pages. You would open up the spring back and then the pages would be laid out and then some wind would come and pages would fly. And I was notorious of having tons of post-it notes on my back kind of facing pages. I think I got frustrated and actually took them all out. Um, but what I would do is write my like floor plans and shot lists on all of these facing pages. And then I would have these like messy pencil notes and notes all over my pages and then post-it notes that would just fly out from everywhere. So I would have these little floor plan post-it notes that would just fly out. And a friend who shared, shared scriptation was like, Rachel, why are you, why are you afraid? And I was afraid of losing some note or that the transfer wouldn't work or there'd be some glitch in the system or something would happen. And my trusty spring back binder where I would put, you know, the one liner and I would put, you know, all of the pages with all my post-it notes and, and handwritten things. There's some post-it notes um, with underline and pencil and nothing really stands off the page. I felt so committed to this because this is how I had always done it. And once I let go of the fear and jumped in head first, then I can never go back to paper scripts. Plus it's such a waste of paper. There's just piles and piles of paper and paper everywhere that then you hope ends up in a recycling bin, but not, there's just so many people with so much paper and then things get lost. I would literally be opening it, putting in the new color pages and post-it notes would be flying everywhere. And in television, which is where I work as a director, you get changes up until the thing is shot. And sometimes after the scene is shot, new pages come in and you're like, okay, reset, flag on the play, come back. We're going to do this. They want to add this line of dialogue or change this or there are so many things happen with so many changes up to the minute of shooting a scene. And I now have a really effective way of keeping everything I need to know in one place. So one, you know, the, most of you are users of scriptation, so I won't go too much into the basics, but I'm going to just overview the you are bringing PDF files into your scriptation app so you can annotate them, mark them up. What I'm going to share today is the way that I mark my script, the way that I organize, the way that I use this app to, to help strengthen my directing, to make me be so organized so that I make all my days and, and have all the information that I need to communicate out. It lets you, you know, sync across your devices, have a very easy reader mode, which I use when the actors are like, what was my line? I'll put it in reader mode and hold it up so that they just see their lines of dialogue. You can transfer from one draft to the other, use layers and uh, highlight your actors and all kinds of things. Um, I will today, with permission, share a case study for an episode I directed for the show 4400. It's a reboot of the original The 4400. 
that aired on the CW. It's episode 106, If You Love Something. The showrunners are Ariana Jackson and Sunil Nayar. The writer of this episode is Shamari Kirkwood. This is their first episode of television. It was really an honor to direct uh, new younger writers, uh, first episode of television. It was shot by Chris Baffa, who was incredible, and the AD Pablo Gambeda. So I'm gonna share that. Why scriptation helps me so much is my job is visioning and communicating what I do in collaboration. So if you think about a director's job, Specifically in television, I have to communicate with showrunners and executive producers. So like, Rachel, what are you going to do? How are you going to do? How long is it going to take to do this thing that you want to do? So I have to be very, very clear in my communication. So scriptation helps me with that. I am often communicating with the writer and asking the writer questions. Do they need to go walk down here? Do they need to pick this up on that line? How tight to dialogue, uh, scripted dialogue, do we need to stay, all those kinds of things. Often the DP is like, Rachel, what's the plan? How do you want to cover this? How are we going to do X, Y, Z? So I'm going to share with you uh, the way I use scriptation for my plans. On 4400, I had a big sort of stunt wire pull uh, action, uh, like it was a wire pull with a ratchet, and the producing director is like, how long is this going to take? What is your plan? And I showed her my scriptation uh, pages and over lunch was able to communicate how I was doing it, what order we were shooting, what, what was happening. I'm also communicating quite a lot with department heads and the whole creative team from production designer and the art department to props, wardrobe, choreographer, if there is one on the show, stunt coordinators, special effects, visual effects, production crew, camera ops, certainly with cast, with the actors. And sometimes I do shows like Queens, which had music. So I was working with music supervisors and, and songwriters and and sometimes, often, I'll bring even my scripta scriptation pages up when I'm working with my editors. I'm like, what was happening on the day? What were the notes that I was taking? And the script supervisor does share my circle takes and notes about the take. But I have all of my notes from the day in my scriptation file. So it's become very, very handy. For those of you who are new to television, I'm going to break down what I'm doing and how I use scriptation for those pieces. So for me as an episodic director, I have a lot of meetings and a lot of work to do with the script in preparing to film. So I start with a concept, we start with concept meetings where typically the AD leads, but on some show they're like, Rachel, take it over because they know I'm super prepared. I'll show how I use scriptation and all the notes that I take to share my ideas and communicate with the department heads what my vision is for the episode. Then I go on location scouts and I use, I'll show you the bookmark feature where I will bookmark and search by every location that we're going to so that when I'm touring a set or I'm on a location, I have all the scenes I'm gonna shoot there. So I'm looking for the window, the doorway, and she comes in here and, oh, we have four scenes in this space. And, and so I'm using my uh, bookmark features right from the location scout. All the meetings that I have with department heads, when I go to the tech scout, which is when we walk through set to set to say, okay, we're gonna master from here, we're shooting in this direction, these are the things that I need. I need a steady cam or a camera crane or what have you. And I have all of my notes in my scriptation file. To our production meeting, which is the last meeting that I have before I shoot, where we're making sure all the plans that I've talked about all along the way are in place. And then the tone meeting. The tone meeting, the TV directors in the house are very familiar with this. This is when you meet with the showrunner and sometimes writers and all of, it's a full house with EPs and network folks and sometimes your ADDP and now uh, recently editors. Everyone is in this meeting where the showrunner and writers communicate the vision. So they're going step-by-step step of the themes, things about the actors, um, some suggestions of do's and don'ts. And I take very, very detailed meetings and I put all of these notes into my scriptation file, which I'll show you how to do. Then I start shooting and I'll show you the ways in which I use scriptation when I shoot. So uh, I'm gonna talk you through the steps 
And then I'm actually going to go show you my files, and then I'll walk you through step by step from all the drafts and show you all the different ways that I'm using Scriptation. My process, every director is different. So I'm not saying this is the way to use Scriptation. I'm sharing this is my way. This is tools that the program offers that I use to help me in the work that I do. So I always read the script first. I want to enjoy the story. I try to do it twice. Um, and I will use the pen tool to just know, uh, I'll draw hearts, I'll like put a question mark if something doesn't make sense, or um, I'm just starting to, to respond to the story and the material first and mark it right from that first draft. Then I'll get into how I mark the script and I use my own color coded system. This came from nowhere. This is sort of how I, a system I have developed where I always mark my characters in yellow. I put my props in blue and I know I have two greens up there, but I use like a highlighted green for camera and some wardrobe. And then I use underlines, this wavy underline for physical action. I underline straight for performance notes, if there's music cues, if there's visual effects, special effects, and any kind of notes. So this is sort of my an overview of my process that I will uh, get into. Let me stop sharing this screen here. And, uh, oh, there's already a Q&A. So pre-visual before location scouts. Can you explain how that is done before you've seen the location? So I'm doing everything step by step. So I'm not uh, blocking or shot listing before I'm at a location. I am starting that process of pre-visualization when I'm on the scout. So uh, what I'll show you is, is the ways that I'm, that I'm doing that. So what I do is I always import, first actually, let me show you the script, what it looked like. Um, and I'll sort of show you the tools and the way that I'm using things. And then I'll go back to a clean draft, import, show how I save, show how I start building this piece by piece. So this is the, the, the draft that I shot with September 13th. I use facing pages. And what I do when I'm filming is I create bookmarks where I have today. So this page represents today. I screenshot my call sheet. So I know what scenes I'm shooting. So I have all the scene numbers, three, six, eight, 11, and 15. This was my last day of shooting. I also ask the AD, what's my timeline? So I had from seven, and I'm a little messy, so please no judgment. I'm a good professor and a good director, but I'm very messy in handwriting. My head moves faster than my hands. So no judging my handwriting here. So I had three and a half hours for the first uh, cocktail lounge in Bob in the Bois Blanc Hotel, 10.30 to one, then an hour lunch and so on, and half an hour to get the lens baby, um, 15. I also screenshot my cast list. So I have um, my actor's name, their pronouns. This show is really amazing. It's not even a, a second thought. Prono pronouns are on the call sheet, super easy to add and, and way to really be inclusive. And then uh, all of their character names. So that very quickly, I can always go, what was that? The, the person who's playing the bartender, like the day players, I have a hard time remembering all the names. So I will go to my today page and I can always um, go right back easily in my bookmarks. And as I shoot the scenes, I check them off. And you see by the end, I didn't even uh, give a check but these scenes did get shot. This episode did air. So both of those can get check marks. So this is a way that I'm uh, following through the day and I'll use bookmarks. I learned this from Valerie Weiss. She was uh, showing how we use bookmarks. She'll add a scene. So scene three bookmarked because we were shooting that and you can actually create bookmarks and then put them in order that you're shooting. And then when I finish shooting a scene, I'll delete it from my list. I think at some point I didn't delete or I probably added it back for another tutorial because I do a lot of these tutorials because people see how I use scriptation and they want to learn how. So that is what I'm trying to show today to, to help you all. And again, take what's helpful and what's useful and let go of what's not because the way that we, uh, the way that we work 
is different. Uh, so find what works for you. So how I get screenshots into my script is all through the uh, photos. And I'm gonna, I'm, right now I'm showing the things that I use and then I can go, I'll go back uh, piece by piece and show how I did it. But it's as simple as going, I will go into my call sheet and right now I'll go into my email and I don't want to show anything that I shouldn't show in here. You never know what's in one's email. So I made this, where's the production draft? For instance, the prep pack that I know I can share. So I had a prep pack which had the sets. So the way that I'm putting a, a screenshot in is I will make it as big as I want to in the screen and I'll take a screenshot with the power button and the volume up button. And then I have a screenshot and I do that with the call sheet from my email. And then I can crop out anything I want or don't want. And then I click done and I can save that to my photos. I hope there's nothing in photos that I cannot show. I just got off a show and I'm on little sleep, but I can go back to my scriptation file and say, I wanna add that. It'll come up first. I'll go to the photos, to photo library. There it is, done. And I can then add that screenshot. So what I did here was just screenshot the call sheet for both of these pieces. I didn't see what the other question was. Okay, yes. Yes, the session's being recorded so that all of my stumbles, because I stumble over my words sometimes, because again, my brain moves faster, is all recorded so that those of you watching later can see all my stumbles. But I offer this in the spirit of generosity and uh, wanting you to be great. So remember in my paper script how uh, nothing, it was like pencil marks and nothing really jumped on the, on the page. When I use the color coding, you can see, so Jarell and Keisha, the characters, and because, uh, I'm older than I look, I'll write the actor's names over. So I never mess up, uh, the actor's name. And like I said, I use a squiggly line for, are they standing? Are they sitting? If there's any movement, I'll put if there's a set piece, like they're at a table and empty glasses and empty burger trays. And I, I made it where they were gonna sit at the table instead of stand around a table. I also mentioned I share that I have the uh, tone meeting notes. So I type all of my tone meeting notes into a Google document, and then I cut and paste them into these post-it notes. So this icon right here, post-it note, I will post it there. You can click this little paintbrush and make it any color. So I'll make all of my tone meeting notes say that magenta pink. And then if I wanna put um, notes, sometimes I'll, I'll uh, add say action verbs or certain key words or things I wanna use to talk to the actor. And you can click in there and type them. So maybe I want, um, you know, Keisha should be, you know, um, whatever, put a wall up, um, block him with your words. I might put notes that I want for the actors and I store them so that when you're on set and all of the pressures of, Rachel, what do you want? What do we need? Are we doing this? What's the next shot? What are we, like, uh, I think Paris Barkley, he, he will take a counter, like one of those event counters, and he counts how many questions that a director answers every day on set. And it's like thousands. I cannot remember all things at all the time. I have like long COVID brain. I have old lady brain. I have like solo parent. My kids are a lot brain. And so I keep everything that I need to know right in my script. So I have the showrunner's notes right there. So in this scene, Keisha and Claude, Keisha told Claudette she should heal, realizing something weird around the 4,400 and we have to figure it out. You can also add little paragraphs so it's easier to read. We're not gonna tell the government. At the end of five, it's Scully and Mulder. And so these are, so before I shoot, I reread. And even when I'm doing the scene, I reread the showrunner's notes to know 
am I really hitting it? Am I hitting the target? 